Nearly 100 French journalists have signed a petition demanding access to Gaza and protection for journalists covering the conflict. For years, journalists have been unable to enter the Gaza Strip without permission from Israeli authorities. Now they can't enter at all. We'll hear from Rebecca Ritters in southern Israel again, this time on the challenges facing her and other reporters as they try to uh, record events in the territory. This is the spot where TV crews from all over the world come to set up to try to get the story out about what's happening in Gaza. It's been dubbed the Hill of Shame. Shame because although it's about as close as we can get to Gaza at the moment, it's still around about two kilometers from the border. From here, you can see with a zoom lens some of the activity happening in the northern part of the strip. You can see aerial bombardments and you can hear outgoing artillery from the Israelis into the strip. You can sometimes see tanks and even hear combat fighting on the ground. But it's frustrating for so many journalists here and it brings about a bit of professional shame that they're not able to get inside the strip and tell people's stories or bear witness to what's happening with their own eyes. I'm covering this conflict uh, 30 years or something. Uh, so I think that this is the worst war ever that I uh, am covering now. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not uh, so good to me as a reporter to uh, be in the borderline uh, to cover this uh, conflict. It's very difficult now to, uh, to, uh, to get uh, real information from Gaza and from the other side as well. It's a war, it's a war also in the media, and we know it. The weight of getting accurate information out of the Gaza Strip lies heavily on the shoulders of those few journalists, many of them Gazan, who were inside already working inside the Gaza Strip on October 7. Many of them have now sadly died in this conflict. And those that remain are dealing not only with the deteriorating humanitarian conditions and fear of bombardment, but also of unspeakable losses themselves. That's Rebecca Ritters in southern Israel. Christopher Resch is from Reporters Without Borders. Uh, welcome to DW. How concerned are you that foreign journalists can't get into the Gaza Strip? Yes, hello from my side as well. And of course, we are very much concerned. I mean, since the blockade Israel imposed 16 years ago, the journalists cannot enter the territory without authorization. Uh, and now Israeli authorities don't allow journalists to enter the Gaza Strip at all. The only possibility would be through the Rafah crossing in the south, uh, but this is closed. Um, on, a, on a general level, I mean, the work of journalists is essential during times of armed con conflicts like these. Um, we just heard from the colleagues how dangerous it is and how sad they are that they can't incite to report. Um, timely reporting helps res ensure the respect for international human rights and humanitarian law and prevent further violations. And also it can be essential and life-saving in times uh, of conflicts. So, so we need independent reporting from inside uh, the Strip, but we need also much more protection. And, and this is just so difficult right now. OK, so we've heard and you've reiterated that war is a dangerous business. Doesn't Israel have a duty of care to keep non-combatants, like journalists, out of harm's way? Yes, of course. In RSF, in our uh, point of view and from our perspective, um, they have, Israel has uh, the responsibilities uh, to protect much more. And, and this is why we um, just filed a complaint two days ago before the International Criminal Court uh, detailing possible, I, I repeat, possible um, war crimes um, while targeting civilian areas and with these targeting, also targeting and uh, eventually killing um, Palestinian journalists. Um, I understand that the Israeli government says, um, or are on the point that uh, the Hamas deliberately hides their, uh, their positions in civilian areas, but uh, still there is a responsibility to take as much protection and care um, as, as the Israeli army can. Right. I'm, I'm slightly confused by your answer because on the one hand you say that you want to get into what is clearly a war zone uh, and that uh, uh, Israel is impeding that. So you want to get in and you want them to protect you while acknowledging that they have a duty to keep you out of harm's way. Well, uh, again, I would imagine Israel would uh, argue the safest place for you is not to be inside a war zone. 
Sure, and I understand the confusion. Uh, you see me slightly smiling, but that that's the way of uh, conflict reporting. You know, I mean, I trust the seasoned colleagues that are in Israel right now, and um, I mean, the French colleagues signed a petition. I think by 150 people signed it to go inside. I think they they can trust uh, we tr can, we can trust them to take the risk, and we need this reporting. We need the reporting to be as safe and secure as can be, but we need the reporting because otherwise uh, Gaza will turn into an informational black hole and we, we, we can't want that. I understand that the war in Gaza is shaping up to be the deadliest single event for journalists for decades. Uh, how many journalists have been killed? I mean, obviously the numbers are hard to really point down, but, um, and there are, I mean, RSF is not the only, um, international press freedom organization uh, watching the conflict i mean we all all are our numbers are at 34 killed right now um and this would be i mean wars are especially deadly when they when they begin but the first two and three weeks of this war is the deadliest of any armed conflict in the world for media professionals uh, in this in this century uh, we have 12 people, 12 journalists confirmed to be killed in connection to their work. This is one in Lebanon, one in Israel and, and 10 in Gaza. And until now we have 34 in total, but we need to determine whether they are have been killed in connection or because of their work even. Right. And I'd like to focus on, on one uh, in particular. Uh, this is a Reuters journalist, uh, Issam Abdallah. Uh, he died in airstrikes yeah. in southern Lebanon that also wounded other journalists. And Reporters Without Borders, I understand, believes that these journalists were deliberately targeted. Yeah, we believe that they have been deliberately targeted. Uh, we have investigated this incident. Uh, it was on Friday, October 13th, around 6 p.m., 6 in the evening. And um, from what we know, from what we see, there was um, a team of journalists, actually there were two groups of people, one team of journalists consisting of seven people, Isam Abdallah being one of them. And they were clearly visible on a, on a kind of eleva elevated area. They had press signs on them. They had a vehicle, a car uh, with a big press sign on it. They were in the area for like an hour. And there was, according to our research, an Apache military helicopter by the Israeli army hovering around. and probably monitoring, and still they have been targeted uh, deliberately, as we think, because they have been targeted twice, 36, seven seconds in between. And um, I mean, of course, we have to be very much careful with accusations, but from the, 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 the pieces of information we were able to gather, this looks like a deliberate strike. And what has Israel said about your accusation? Can you repeat that? Sorry, there was a, a, yes. a glitch what, what, in the line. What has Israel said about your accusation? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry. I'll say it again. What has Israel uh, said about your an, accusation? Yeah, we have yet to hear an official reply, but uh, immediately after the strike, they declared that they were sorry and they were looking into it. Uh, we hope this investigation continues. So, if true, would this con do, you, do you believe this would constitu constitute a specific crime? If true, this would be a war crime. Which would have to be uh, determined, I suppose, by the, uh, the ICC. Um, we thank you for joining yeah. us and outlining that so clearly. Christopher Resch, uh, Media Relations Officer for Reporters Without Borders Germany. Thank you.